Like many of you watching this video, I'm sure you were all watching the Memorial Tournament at Muirfield Village, Jack's Tournament, and play, Rory was in contention. We want Rory to do better. Everyone's behind him, but I think the immense pressure that he's put under, he puts himself under, the golf media put him under, the expectation that he's got on his shoulders is a little bit too much for that golf swing. And I'm gonna tell you why in this video. If you are new to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, drop down in the comments section below. Am I right or am I wrong in thinking that we have big expectations for Rory? Do we feel like we, is it unjust? Is it correct? What do you think? What are your expectations of Rory? I think he's got three majors, 23 PGA Tour victories. I'll tell you something, that is some career, but he will always kind of be brandished with he should have hit double figures on majors by now, or he should be past so-and-so in terms of PGA Tour wins. Do we have high expectations that are unfair? What do you think? I want to know your, I want to know your opinion down in the comments section below. It is without doubt that Rory has an incredible golf swing. It's obvious, okay? He has so much power so much speed a lot of that comes from all the gym work that he does he's a strong lad he's he's only five foot eight but he's a very very strong lad unbelievable flexibility and power within the core to be able to not only do the moves that he does but do them with power and do them with speed but what we've seen over the years under pressure under the biggest pressure i should say not just a general pga tour event pressure majors the biggest events on the pga tour he sometimes come a little bit unstuck again that's not to say that he does it all the time because he's won majors he's won massive tournaments but sometimes i feel that he gets into a little a little rut where he just can't perform under those big occasions now i've worked very closely in the past with pete cowan who's actually coached rory literally ever since he was a teenager not saying he's coached him full time but he's been with him and coaching him and kind of helped him along the way since he was a teenager pete used to be the national coach for ireland who rory used to play for so he's always kind of helped him out and rory's always gone back to pete and i think it's been very well documented that rory's gone to pete on probably five or six different occasions over the last few years and if you look at his successes post pete coward I'm pretty sure you'll find he's kind of won very often. And the reason why is the way Pete Cowan coaches the transition is absolutely perfect for Rory because what it does, it helps him neutralise his own faults. Rory's the kind of the golfer that gets the top of the backswing, he drops it into that slot and then he releases through. He gets that power and that's where he gets a lot of his speed from. That's where he gets a lot of the... The, the, the amazingly high ball flight and the distance and everything like that. But under pressure, he drops it into that slot an iota too much. You wouldn't even be able to see it, okay? We've seen it, we, we go all the way back to the Masters when he kind of blew up on the back nine. That 10th hole, that duck hook into the left side, that is dropping it and then flipping that face over. Timing goes. The golf swing for Rory between Saturday and Sunday, let's be, let's be fair, it hasn't changed much. But what did change probably was tempo and timing. You get the club up to the top of the backswing, you drop it into that slot, but you don't quite time it perfectly. And what we see with him, with the wedges in particular, he's awful. Under pressure, and when he's not quite got the timing right, his wedge play is not good. And it's not so much he's fatting it or thinning it, is it? It's distance control. He gets into position and he just generally, I would say, overhits the wedges, okay? Now, I don't want to relate this back to me because me and Rory McIlroy being talking about in the same sentence is actually embarrassing, okay? For me to say it and just for Rory. But I have the same issue. I get to the top of the backswing, I drop it in the slot. I'm a drop and I'm a flipper, okay? I've always have been, or I probably always will be. But, and I've, and I've always struggled with consistency of wedge distances. Rory got so much better when he was with Pete. The reason is because when you get to the top of the backswing, Pete's going to really encourage the transition to be more in front of the chest on the way down, meaning that you're going to be using the bigger muscles through the golf ball. 
you're not going to be using the shoulder the external shoulder rotation to get the club on the inside and again it's not this inside and then trying to find the way back through you start to panic on the pressure or get a little bit agitated or get a bit faster the ball speed pops up the distance goes your direction goes as well so so pete cowan's transition from the top of the backswing is all about bringing this lead elbow working the shoulders down into this position here so we're keeping the club more in front of the body when we're in this position we can now start to rotate so again we're using the bigger muscles to guide that club back to the golf ball an area that rory's got so much better at but under pressure does he just slip back and is it a coincidence that he's not worked with pete for a long time and those areas of the game just start to let him down again now also at the memorial he missed a hell of a lot of putts a lot of par putts but they were par putts from four five six foot when on the back nine of a pretty massive pga tour event you can't have too many of those par putts you can't expect to hold them all either unless you're denny mccarthy who literally holds the world okay so downswing position with the iron has got to be a little bit more in front of the body and then the hands will start to release a little bit better through impact. Okay, that was just pure. Also, because, because Rory in general is a drawer of the golf ball, I've often found that with my lessons with Pete, I've become a little bit more fade biased. My movement through impact here is so much more rotational with the club almost exiting more left that I'm actually more fade biased. Now I can still hit a draw with the exit left because if my impact, if my downswing position's inside, impact and in, I'm able to, I'm using my body better and I can still draw it. But when you're learning this movement, it's definitely more a fade biased feeling, particularly as a golfer that has that kind of drop in the slot sort of motion. So for me, I think Rory has to go back to Pete. He has to go back to Pete to be neutralized. They need to figure out a system where Rory doesn't feel like the whole golf swing has changed, but he's able to manage it. You see him using different types of training aids, like the Pro Sender. I've sort of seen him using that. He uses the, the ball a lot from Tor Striker. And what that does, what that ball does in particular, it allows the club to stay more in front of the body on the way down. Whereas for him, he would, like I say, drop it more on the inside and the ball would not really allow him to do that. So you can see he's actively always working on these areas, but he's not quite got it bang on. So the, the Pete Cowan transition, once he's worked up to the top, and you see it in, the, in Rory's swing now, he's definitely loading up the upper body better to the top of the backswing. The rotational lift to the top of the backswing is a lot better. He just needs to try and make sure now that as the shoulders start to work back down into the golf ball, he's able to keep that club a little bit more in front of him. For him, the, the very simple thought process might be trying to feel like he's hitting more of a fade so, so it prevents the dropping on the inside. Now, what I have to do stress is, as a golf coach and someone that's worked under Pete and spoken to Pete a lot about some of Rory's kind of past history, some of his issues, what they've worked on together, and then also kind of collating that with Rory's performances post Pete, that's where I get my opinion from. Not, it's not necessarily perfectly correct, okay? Everyone's gonna have their opinion, but we can't deny that his career has been incredible. Just always that little bit of a niggling doubt as to whether he should have been a little bit better. And that's sad, isn't it? For a guy that's won 23 times on the PGA Tour and three majors, that's a phenomenal career. Right, so the feel for, for what you can take from this video in terms of transition, you get to the top of the backswing. And as that, before the lower body starts to move, this is a practice drill, just really work that right elbow and right shoulder downwards there. I want you to really feel like you're working it down towards this trail knee there. And then once you hit impact, rotate. And I want you to feel that the golf club then follows the right hip around. So we're getting this kind of lower finish position post impact. So one, hit, two. And you get that, 
that lower position through the golf ball is going to be a really big help for quality of ball striking. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it worthwhile. Hope you picked up some information that you can take into your, your own golf game. But more importantly as well, interact. Drop down in the comments section below. Answer the earlier question about Rory's career so far. Do you agree with my perspective of him going back to Pete to help him with that golf swing that will help him, I feel, under pressure? Or should we all just stay in our lane and let one of the world's best players figure it out himself? Guys, thanks for watching. See you again very soon.